praise the Most High. Come, all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come, all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come now and worship the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. sycamore trees and mulberry trees and wheat, lots of different plants. I think one of Jesus' favorite plants must have been the mustard plant. Do you like mustard? I like mustard. <laughs> I put mustard on my proper slice, but it was delicious. You do like mustard? You're my son, aren't you? A child plants a mustard seed in an empty garden. It is an itty bitty seed. It isn't anything very special yet. Adults in the front row get the better perspective. Mustard seeds are so small that you have to look hard to see them. You have to look so hard to see them that you need to get really close. There is not much to be done with a single teeny weeny seed. You can't eat it or wear it. You can't take it for a walk, or wear it, or cuddle with it. You can't write or blow bubbles with it. The only thing you can do is plant it in the soil. Then the rain falls, and the sun shines, and things begin to happen in the earth. But no matter how hard you look, or how close you get, you can't see the tiny seed. The seed is hidden, down with the moles, down, down with the ants, down, down, down with the earthworms. Then, in the place of the tiny little bitty seed, up comes a shoot. Up, up comes a sprout. Up, up, up comes a bush. But it doesn't stop there. It grows and it grows and it grows. <laughs> Until it becomes a humongous tree. Birds make their nests there. The neighbor 
Lewis exclaim, a mustard tree? Amazing. Birds resting there? Surprising. People enjoying the shade? Unbelievable. See all the names. They're all gathered around. Acorns grow into big oak trees. Cedars have trunks that you can't fit your arms around. Must mustard plants are just ordinary bushes. But not this one. This one is a mustard tree. You don't have to look hard or get really close to see it. It's right in front of you. <laughs> Some people touch it to make sure it's real. Others sit under its branches. They take the pods from the tree and remove the seeds and make spices. They take the mustard leaves and seeds and make medicine. The spices in the medicine are there for everyone. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed in the garden right outside our windows, growing from itsy bitsy, teensy weensy, to colossal, from impossible to see to unable to miss. The tree is so gigantic, it's a wonder. It's not at all what we expect to find, and yet there it is, surprising <coughs> us, helping us to imagine what it can be. But isn't yet. <coughs> the Thank you so much for helping me read that to the congregation. Get that back to your seats. I have to say I was surprised, uh, shocked, actually. When I got my botany lab test back from Dr. Hoke my sophomore year of college, it was the worst that I'd ever done on an exam. And I immediately had this sinking feeling that all was lost and hopeless. And of course, it was too late to drop the class because the, the deadline had already passed. And I just felt embarrassed. I knew it was going to be a difficult test, so I came to the lab in the days prior to make sure that I had uh, a handle on all the topics. And it was identifying the difference between monocots and dicots at the cellular level that uh, proved to be especially tricky for me. But nonetheless, I felt ready, or at least ready enough, the day of the exam. I even felt fairly confident afterwards. But when we returned to that, botany lab class, and I saw my exam covered in red dash marks, I knew that something had gone horribly wrong. And I didn't know nearly as much as I thought I did. <coughs> now thankfully, I wasn't alone, and the exam was curved, heavily as it was, so I wound up with a B. <laughs> but still, I can feel that deep and sinking feeling of having tried so hard with studying and preparation, and just completely bombing the exam itself. So here we are in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, and it sounds like the apostles are feeling like they just bombed their faith exam. Increase our faith, they exclaimed. They could just as well be asking, what are we doing wrong? How are we missing your point? We do what you ask, we're honestly trying, but where is our power and our ability? And once again, Jesus draws upon what would have been a ubiquitous example in his audience's agrarian <laughs> society, the mustard seed and plant. A tiny seed, perhaps even <coughs> tinier than we're used to today because of cultivars producing seeds that might have been closer to the size of lettuce seeds that would grow quickly into a shrub. Now, if you've ever grown mustard before, today we're more accustomed to these small flowering bushes with somewhat fine branches that flow pretty easily in the breeze. And yet, plants have this incredible way of adapting to their surroundings. Stems become more fortified as needed based on the strength that they need to succeed in producing fruit. And mustard plants in the Holy Land, and given the particular harshness of their growing climate, very likely produced a plant with a strong stem 
and branches that might have been reminiscent to a small tree, despite the fact that it's an annual, not a perennial. The parable of the mustard seed, which Jesus tells four chapters earlier in Luke's Gospel, provides us with the imagery of birds nesting comfortably in this otherwise unexpected habitat. I don't think it's uncommon that we feel inadequate in our faith from time to time. Jesus' words may have been received in a, a difficult way by his apostles, and we might receive them in the same way today. He said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, just imagine. One reason why I like this book by Amy Jewel Levine is its ending. Words of hope, words of faith. Hear these words again. She, she writes, it is not at all what we expect to find. And yet there it is, surprising us, helping us to imagine what can be, but isn't yet. It's good for us to remember that Jesus didn't ask us to have faith, the faith of a mustard shrub or a mustard tree. He didn't expect his apostles to have developed and fortified stems and branches or even flowers. He asked us to simply have the seed, the potential, the resolve to grow. If faith is hope in that which we cannot see, what better example than the seed for faith? A seed whose sole function is to create life from dormancy. With the good gifts of creation of rain and sunshine and favorable soil and the tending of animals and humans, for fertilizer and for pruning, the seed is the paramount example of realized potential, along with this intrinsic dependency on the health and the well-being of all in its ecosystem. If our faith is to be a seed, if our faith is to grow from impossible to see to unable to miss, we must commit ourselves to continually cultivating the kingdom of God in our midst. And so let us never become discouraged in our faith. Because perhaps even a seed is enough for us to flourish in the kingdom God provides for us. I take comfort in that.